Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is going to be your general reading for November 2020. Um, just so you know, these are going to be the only readings I do for the month of November um, because I have oral surgery on the 11th. You see, I got my new teeth. Yay. Okay. So I got those in. I went this morning and picked them, <laughs> picked them up. I got a denture box. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> I'm dying. But anyway, um, I recorded this for you yesterday, but apparently, you know, Mercury is, even though it's direct, it's still doing some stuff and the Mac was not recording any sound. So I did three videos before and went to process them and then realized I had absolutely no sound. So I'm going to be redoing your reading. So we'll be using the Radiant White deck. Um, we will be clarifying with La Vida Sibila and we will wrap the reading up with my new boyfriend, Nostradamus. Yes, I love him. And so let me turn the camera around. If it shuts off, don't worry, I'll come right back. So let me go ahead and turn it around for you. I've already done some meditation and shuffling on your sign. Oh, my incense burnt out. Um, and so let me um, do a bit more shuffling and one more rifle and then we'll put our nine cards down okay all right i hope everyone is well i hope the uh election counting results and watching all of that you know even though it's a nail biter hasn't made you too anxious you know do some self-care things and of course you can always turn the tv off should you need so here we go nine cards the eight of cups The Five of Swords. Oh, well. Wow, that's weird. The Nine of Cups. Well. You know, this happened back over the full moon, which was October 30th. Um, but I think it goes all the way back to the eclipse that happened, the, the great American eclipse. Well, the one that we just had back in August, okay? And that one went over the same points as the great American eclipse in 20, I wanna say 2018, 2019. I know somebody knows the real date of that. But it's a situation that I think um, kind of came to a head. Two of cups. Three of Swords. Hmm. And the Hanged Man. Man, I tell you what. I remember was 2015. I had the Hanged Man from 2015 to 2017. Oh, it made me nuts. But if you really understand what the uh, Hangman energy is all about, and I'll do my best to explain that to you as I'm moving along. Um, it, it can be beneficial for you. It just requires patience, okay? The world card. Hmm. Remember when I said it's a situation that's like it's it's been going around in circles? Nine of pentacles. I think there's a bit of jealousy here as well. Okay. And then the eight of swords well that's quite interesting so i have two eights i have two nines a two a three a five a 12 and a 21. now i think what i find most interesting is the world card and where it fell in the spread itself because it's it's the last card down on the past column but it's the first card out on the future row okay so to me it kind of speaks to the idea of be careful what you wish for because you are going to get it but I don't think that it is a bad thing I just think it might be a mentally different thing okay than what you're used to so please don't allow that statement to scare you or freak you out because it's not meant to. What is underneath the deck? There it is, the temperance. And that is the energy that you're going to need to 
try to embody as you move through this situation, okay? And what do I mean by that? Temperance is the combination of the fire and the water. You know when those two things come together, right? Uh, the fire can heat up the water, but at the same time, if it gets too hot, the water can overflow and put the fire out. <laughs> okay, so it's about getting that just right. It's about putting that pot on the stove and getting that, that flame just right so that you can do whatever it is you need to do, right? Not overcooked, not um, undercooked, but so you can get it just the way that you want it. I hope that kind of made sense. So um, two eights. We're going to first start with the uh, the repeater numbers, and I always find that to be uh, an interesting thing. So two eights says that you will receive news that affect the relationship. Well, you know, there it is. All right. Uh, and two nines says that one of you needs to spend more time alone. Well, there it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, but right here, but also two eights can speak to, and I just want to make sure I got this right. Um, I'm getting rusty. But two eights also speak to, hold on one second. I want to say obstacles and hassles. See, two eights, ah, indicate that there is a slight concern in regards to a new romance, relationship, and or partnership. There it is. Okay. And two nines can speak to a possible change of address or a house move. All right. So, oh, I think I know who this reading is for, Pippa, if you're watching. Okay. So, um, you just crossed my mind. So, anyway, um, this eight of cups to me is really the idea of just wandering around and trying to search for something, something that uh, fulfills you in a way, that, that makes you feel whole. And sometimes when we go through situations like that, we literally have to walk away from things that we have already emotionally invested ourselves in. I don't know if this is eight things that you've invested your, if it's eight months, if it's been eight years, okay? But, you know, walking... You're leaving one situation, but you end up walking into another situation, okay? And this is where this Five of Swords comes in. Because the Five of Swords is the card of arguments and disagreements and fights. Um, it is the idea that <clears throat> sometimes if you're in a dispute, you do need to stand up for yourself. But it can also be that idea of sometimes you may say things that... Uh, hurt and offend people and it can, can create tension and then they don't even want to deal with you anymore right so remember I was saying to you that idea about being careful what you wish for this is really what that line is telling me you know you may have wanted to leave one situation for what you thought was a better situation but you find that you jump from the frying pan into the fire now this two of cups I think is is interesting because a lot of people will interpret that card as simply a romantic relationship. And I don't like to, to narrow it like that um, because I've seen the Two of Cups show up when it speaks to a business partnership, where it speaks to a really close friendship, where mutual respect and admiration and care um, is afforded each person within the relationship. At the same time, however, this card, I, I, I see it sometimes show up when we may be kind of struggling within about what, what direction do we want to go in or did I do the right thing or should I do that thing or, you know, you really need to find the balance to balance the feminine with the masculine. And typically what that means for me in my own personal life is to balance the emotion against the logic, okay? Okay. So balancing those two things out, you, you get that same message here with the temperance, the fire with the water, okay? Um, I do say here, going from the five to the three, that gives us two swords. And as I always tell you, twos always represent some type of choice, some type of option, some kind of duality, uh, some type of opposition, 
okay whether you are opposed within yourself about something you know i'm not sure if i should i'm not sure if i shouldn't or if someone is actively actively opposing you no you shouldn't do this no i'm gonna you know if you do that this is gonna happen that kind of a thing but it also speaks to being at a crossroads so there's a decision that needs to be made and i think that that decision has been put on hold as it relates to this relationship i think more than anything there's this undercurrent of movement even though there's no really no real movement in this spread we just see this guy kind of walking normally the movement comes through for me with the with the knights but this represents travel it represents world travel okay one of those outside things uh the traditional meaning of the world card is that you are about to graduate you are about to complete a cycle okay so you're about to graduate that old cycle and begin a new cycle but i have seen this card show up most definitely when it speaks to travel and travel overseas um why perhaps so that you can get a, a better financial footing for yourself but also that maybe you've saved enough money or you've accrued enough whatever to get your own place but this is the odd thing here the eight of swords is an indication that for whatever reason even after you graduate and you get here you feel stuck in a situation that you're not quite comfortable with now sometimes this card can show up to say you have to behave in a certain way and just you know or or you have to accept the way people are behaving to you simply because of the situation that you're in in other words if people are being snarky to you maybe you depend on them for something and so you have to kind of tolerate their behavior but that is not true that is a belief and that's really what the swords represent they represent thoughts perceptions belief and ideas well these things are not really tangible they're not concrete these are just things flowing through the air coming out of people's mouths uh, and so the only person really that has put you in this situation is yourself this is the windmills of your mind i can't break free i see no way out when really if you take the blindfold off and remove those very loose ties you'll find that you're not trapped in such a way that you just can't walk away from this situation so I do get the sense that whatever this thing was that you were working on that you were planning on you thought it was going to uh, be the answer quote unquote to your prayers okay it didn't turn out that way and that happens a lot in life and so for me what I try to do is look at it like a learning experience remember I, I, I always tell you guys that you know making a mistake is a learning curve it's not the end of the world it doesn't mean that you're a failure it doesn't mean that you are stupid it doesn't mean that you are naive it's just a learning curve so now that you've made that mistake you know exactly what not to do going forward okay so if you've been feeling hard or feeling down on yourself don't because you really need um to clear the way that you are thinking so that you can make the right decision for yourself and it goes back to again the idea of balancing the fire and the water the desire with the way you feel okay what is it that you desire and how do you feel about it um the way you're feeling now does that match your desires if it doesn't then only you can change it and that is what the hanged man energy is all about if you'll notice the hangman is hanging there yes but the thing is nobody put him up on that cross he put himself there and he put himself there because he needs to take some time out to discover um what is really true for him this is a neptunian card and neptune is known to bring illusions and fantasies fog not saying things clearly confusion um sometimes we're, we're not sure if if it's other people that are creating those environments or if it's ourselves and so this is about taking a time out for yourself and getting clear on whatever it is that's you know the crux of the problem this card will sometimes come out too when you know maybe you've been stressed out and you've been having headaches or your back's been hurting or you've been having aches and pains in your legs you got to remember the mind body spirit connection 
you know, sometimes your mental state and your emotional state can affect you physically. So again, there's that. So um, let me turn this back around because I think there's one other important message that I should impart to you. <clears throat> this nine of pentacles lady speaks to an independent woman who was able to harness whatever those wild desires are or those wild um, inclinations. See, the bird is, the hood is. So when this hawk, what we, what we know about hawks is that they can fly super high. Uh, they can, you know, attack on a dime. They can spot mice on the ground from two miles up. You know, it's a predator bird. And we also know that throughout history, they were used uh, to help hunt. Um, they were sent out ahead and, you know, whatever the case may be. And so then the bird would return back. And once the bird came back and they were through using it for utilizing its services, they would put a hood over the bird, right? So this is about, in one way, I think, recognizing that where you are, you are okay. Whatever the work is that you did before, you really have something to stand on, to be proud of, okay? But I do feel that you're not looking at the big picture. You're not sending your hawk out to see what's on ahead. And this is why you are in this situation. Okay? But that is self-imposed. All right? Only you can control your mind. Only you can control your thoughts. Right? And so I think this is really about getting clear mentally. Getting clear emotionally. Getting clear spiritually so that you can make the best decisions for yourself. I always want you guys to, to make decisions in your own best interest. <clears throat> Sometimes situations and people will come along who will get you to make decisions against your own best interest. And when that happens, again, you know, chalk it up to a, a learning curve. You know, remember, I'm always telling you how my grandma used to say, you know, trust your own, trust your first mind. Trust that. Okay. So. What I'm going to do now, I only have, I have these two major arcana cards here. I can't look at those. There are no court cards here. So this really isn't about other people. Okay. Except that maybe you got in an argument with two other people. Mm -mm, huh? Okay. Maybe you've had to defend yourself against accusations or whatnot. Um, this right here, particularly this, this knighting situation here. You know, you may have some hopes and some wishes, and this card says whatever you hope or you wish for is going to come true. And what you, what it looks as though is that you're wishing for some type of either situation in which you're dealing with people who respect you and and uh, admire you. Maybe this is about a romantic relationship, but look where it gets you. So again, that idea about be careful what you wish for still comes across. So let me, um, you know, but the, what I will say is that it's never too late. <laughs> right now, you may not be able to, this says that you're, you're almost ready to go. You're packed and ready to move. Here you are about to get your own place, right? But then for whatever reason, you think you are stuck and you don't see how you're going to accomplish that. That's really how that reads to me. So let me, and I have one, two, three cups, one, two, three swords, two major arcanas and a pinnacle. And this is really about just doing the hard work. And that's why I say this is about conquering those wild inclinations that you have and, you know, putting your foot down and sticking to the plan. Okay. Because this always speaks to some kind of financial gain in some way. All right. So what are you going to do with it? Um, Okay, so we're going to look at this Eight of Cups here to see if the Eight of Cups can tell us anything being next to the uh, Hangsman and the World card. And this could be you went off on a journey trying to seek in what you find and you end up getting caught up in some kind of cult or some shit. Seriously. <laughs> okay, it can be that. So now the cards are funny. They don't always speak directly, you know, and pointedly in the manner in which sometimes we probably need them to. But I think everything that I'm saying is making sense. Nothing about the Eight of Cups. Let's look at the Five of Swords here. 
And the Five of Swords is a victory card, um, believe it or not. Um, but basically, it's a five, and fives indicate ups and downs and changes, and sometimes a focus on bitterness and frustration. Well, again, only you can control your own brain. Nothing about the Five of Swords. The Nine of Cups never tells me anything. So I'm going to move over here to the Two of Cups, except that it's the Wish card. That's the only thing that ever tells me. So the Two of Cups. Nothing about the Two of Cups next to the Hanged Man or the World card. Three of Swords. I don't think this situation is as tricky as you think it is. You just think it is, and it's not. And I just feel that that's because you're not thinking clearly. The Three of Swords next to the World. It is informing you that a karmic situation is coming to an end with the promise of a brighter future. It tells that a situation has almost come to an end, so prepare for new opportunities to arise as the future holds positive promise. It also indicates it is a time to focus on your future and to let go of the past. It is telling you to move forward with faith and with trust. And again, here it is. That's you. That's nobody else. Okay? Nine of Pentacles. You know, you just need to determine what it is you're going to do. The Nine of Pentacles says, it indicates that you are ready to move on to the next step along your path. It tells of major moves, relocations, and huge lifestyle changes. It also tells of extensive journeys or travel that will be beneficial in the long term. But however, I have one, two, three swords cards, and there's a second meaning here, this card, with three swords cards near. It is telling you not to spend money frivolously or carelessly. Be careful with money and financial matters and keep a rein, a hold on your spending. There it is. You're, you're not seeing the big picture, okay? Now, the eight of swords. You know, maybe you're trying to move out and you, you know, you $100 short. Have you been eating out every night? You've been going to the coffee shop every night? What have you been doing with your money? If you've been doing that and you really want to move, cut that crap out. Buy you a can of coffee and make you some lunch. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Eight of Swords. And we want to see it next to the hangman. It is asking you to keep quiet counsel and keep to yourself for the moment. Do not offer any information and do not add more weight to the situation or issue. As to speak your mind or voice your opinion at this time may worsen an already uncomfortable situation. Keep yourself to yourself. That's what it says. And I would suspect that the question that you have is about this nine of pentacles. At least that's the one I would look at if this were my reading. Okay? Because what's so interesting is from the three to the eight gives me five swords. And here's the five up here. So from the five to the three, again, gives you eight swords. So if you choose to fight this out or whatever the case may be, it's not going to go well for you. Right? And so, to me, this card always speaks to some kind of silver lining. It really does. You know, this may be painful for a little while, but ultimately, the way that you think about it is going to change that. Okay? That's why this you're being called upon to take this position of the hanged man. So that you can gain some personal clarity. So something can become clear to you. Because right now, <coughs> excuse me. It's a confused situation. Even these two cards, sometimes I've seen them show up when somebody's been overindulging. They're drinking, they're doing drugs, they're in a fugue state. Okay? That's not going to get you nowhere. You can't escape whatever this is, right? And so you should really try to... Clear that. 
All right, so I'm going to look at this nine of pentacles because to me, that lady is strong and she's independent and she's worked hard for where she's, even if you got like, you know, two pots and a half a window to throw, you know, your piss out of, out of the window, you know, you did that. And so whatever gains that you've made and whatever things that you've done, give yourself credit where credit is due. It may not be anybody else's um, belief system or idea of success. Okay, but success is relative. What does success mean to you? Right? For some people, it's, you know, a mansion and a, and a five Ferraris and a private plane. For some people, it's the fact that they're able to get their kids from high school into college. So what does success mean? Only you can define that. Okay? Here we go. The Lamonti. The precious presence. Oh, that's that's great. And the Dona Maritata. Now, looking at this now, remember when I went back and I said this two of cups could be this romantic situation? <clears throat> Perhaps you had your hopes on going from the girlfriend um, to securing this uh, wealthy position by becoming the wife, right? But at the same time, maybe you do marry somebody or you get with somebody because they've got money. But I don't think you're going to be happy. Okay? Does that make sense? This speaks to the idea of somebody who is not able to speak their emotions. All right? The precious presence can be just that. It can be an inheritance. It can be financial gain. It could be property. It could also be advice given to you that's worth its weight in gold. Typically, it represents beneficial relationships and contracts, okay? Here, the Dona Maritata is the queen of coins. Um, she typically represents um, someone who has a nurturing quality and a capability. She doesn't always have children. Okay, I just want you to be aware of that. <clears throat> All right, she doesn't always have children. It just basically says that somebody who um, is trustworthy, is sound, um, has good business ideas, is somebody um, who is practical and down to earth, a nurturer kind of an individual. Well, if we remove perhaps... Uh, the romantic possibility out or even the friendship that you thought was was um, going to work out in the manner that you thought it was what that says is despite all of the whatever the hell is going on in this situation really at your core that's who you are this is who you are and you know this card combined with this card says you already have your own riches you know, you just have to discover what they are. Does that make any sense? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull one Nostradamus uh, Golden Oracle. So, formulate your question. You know, maybe there is a third party in this. You know, I got three people here and three swords here. But, really, to me, this speaks about not other two people it speaks about you it's never the other person in the relationship it's always you people can't make you feel any way if you don't allow them to right okay here we go number 11 the book that's interesting As long as the fool in silence remains, people may think he has half a brain. Ask advice of someone who knows more than you, experts or people you know who love you. It is a roadmap and personal advice provided from someone we should seek out. Now, these cards said for you to keep counsel to yourself. And I would suggest that at the moment, that's what you do until you can get some clarity. And then when you are ready to make your move, seek out the counsel and the advice of people who trust you. 
who respect you, who love you, who admire you, and who treat you like who treats you like an equal. Okay, so that's what I have for you, Gemini, for November. Um, I do hope this message helped you, and um, since I won't be seeing you again within the next week or so, stay safe, take care of yourself, and Namaste. Bye.